Welcome to Disc Washer's VHS Head Cleaning and Audiovisual Setup and Alignment Tape. The following section contains video test patterns with instructions on how to adjust your video monitor or television's contrast, brightness, color, and sharpness controls to keep your set aligned for optimum viewing enjoyment. The Audio Alignment Tools section provides test tones for proper channel identification, adjusting speaker level settings, and a phase alignment section for your stereo audio system. The final section of this tape contains a 30-second VHS head cleaning section, specially designed to remove dust, tape oxide residue, and other foreign particles from the helical scan recording and playback head in your VHS unit. It is recommended that you clean and adjust your system every three months in order to maintain optimum performance, proper audio balance, and video alignment. The video tests on this VHS will allow you to calibrate your video display in order to get the best picture possible. The test patterns can be used to calibrate TV sets, flat panel displays, and projection monitors. While some of the test patterns will enable you to adjust controls found on your display, in other cases this tape will allow you to see where your system needs attention from a qualified technician. This test will allow you to set your display to the correct black level. If your brightness level is set too high, true black tones will appear smoky. If brightness is set too low, you will not be able to see detailing in shadows. You will notice that there are two bars on screen. By increasing the brightness level, both bars appear brighter. By decreasing the brightness control, both bars appear darker. To set the correct level of black for your display, increase the brightness level until both bars are visible on screen. Then, decrease the brightness level until only the right bar is just visible. At this point, your display will be set at the correct brightness level. This test will allow you to set the correct white level for your display. If the white level is set too low, the picture will look muddy or dim. If the white level is set too high, the brightest parts of a picture will appear to bloom with little or no detail present. During the contrast demonstration, you will see a simulation of the effect of increasing and decreasing your contrast control. As the contrast setting increases, notice the lines on the test pattern become blurred. As you decrease contrast, the lines will appear sharp again. The correct contrast setting for your display should be set to the point where the lines just begin to blur. You are now ready to adjust the color and tint levels on your set. The next three images have been selected to allow you to use familiar images to set color to a proper level and then adjust for tint. Beginning with the model, adjust color until the flesh tones appear slightly saturated or artificially high. Then reduce color level until flesh tones appear normal and lifelike. The blue in the sky should appear deep and natural. If it appears to be washed out, Bring the color level up slightly. This image should be vivid and lifelike. If the color and tint are set properly, then the complex color should be clearly different and complementary. You may wish to move between these images, making small adjustments to color and tint until you are satisfied with the picture's accuracy.
The final adjustment is the sharpness level. The use of a sharpness control is actually an artificial enhancement of contrast. When the sharpness level is increased, a white line is added, outlining all of the dark areas of the picture. The image on your screen is a series of vertical multiburst bars. The packing density or frequency of the bars increases toward the right-hand side of the screen. The sharpness adjustment has the greatest effect on the high-frequency detail of an image. As you increase the sharpness control, the vertical bars toward the right-hand side of the screen will appear to increase in contrast. Conversely, decreasing the sharpness control will appear to decrease the contrast. Adjust the sharpness control so the high-frequency bars on the right-hand side of the screen roughly equal the contrast of the bars on the left-hand side. The audio enhancement tools will walk you through the proper setup and calibration of the audio components of your system to ensure optimum performance. If your system is equipped with a subwoofer, the audio tools will also assist you in setting the subwoofer's output to achieve maximum impact with minimum distortion. To ensure that you get the best results from the audio tests, turn off all sound processing options, any dynamic range compression and loudness features, and set equalization to the null or zero position on your system before you proceed. The channel ID test allows you to identify the left speaker as left and the right speaker as right. If the left announcement comes out of the right speaker, first check your connections between the receiver and the speakers. If they are connected correctly, check the connections between your VHS player and your receiver for proper channel assignment left channel left channel right channel right channel this test will allow you to adjust the level of each speaker to ensure that your system is balanced from left to right when properly adjusted the speakers will produce the most lifelike sonic presentation and allow a soundtrack to be heard as the producer and recording engineer intended the test signal used in this test will be band-limited pink noise. If you have remote control capability for level adjustment on your system, use the remote to begin the test, seated in the position you would normally watch TV from. Adjust the individual channels for equal level at the listening position. For best results, use a sound pressure level meter to adjust channel levels. A comfortable volume is usually between 78 dB and 85 dB as measured on a Radio Shack or equivalent sound level meter set for C weighting and slow response. It is important to keep in mind that music and soundtracks are dynamic, that is, they have soft and loud passages. Properly setting the levels should allow the loudest passages to have impact without distorting the sound. As you set your levels, do not try to set them at maximum. polarity test allows you to determine if your speakers are wired correctly. Each speaker has a positive and negative wired connector, as does the receiver. The positive and negative connections on each speaker should be wired to the corresponding connection on the receiver. The polarity test, sometimes referred to as a phase test, will use both left and right speakers. Broadband noise that covers the entire frequency spectrum will emanate from both speakers. The signal will be in phase for the first 10 seconds and then switch to being out of phase for 6 seconds. 
When the signal is in phase, the sonic image, or noise, should be heard centered between the speakers. When the signal switches from in phase to out of phase, there should be an audible drop in output and the sonic image, or noise, will shift to an undetermined place in the room. If the audio level decreases when the signal is out of phase, your speakers are in phase. For best results, before you begin the polarity test, adjust the volume of each speaker so they are approximately equal in level.